wave optics in the previous chapter ray optics by assuming that light travels in a straight line we easily explained the concepts of reflection refraction and dispersion now the question is does the light really travel in a straight line now observe the illustration consider a light source illuminating a screen if we place a coin in front of the light the coin obstructs the path of light if the light travels in a straight line then we should see a dark circular spot on the screen however this does not happen in fact we get a bright spot in this place this can only happen if the light bends at this point and reaches this spot to explain the bending of light in the year 1678 a dutch physicist christian huygens proposed a theory called wave theory of light when a stone is dropped into a stagnant water of a pond waves spread out from the point of impact in concentric circles every concentric circle is associated with either a crust or a trough if we consider any concentric circle all points on the circle will oscillate with the same phase this is because they are at same distance from the point of impact a locus of all these points which oscillate in the same phase is called a wave front the speed at which the wave front moves outwards is called speed of the wave now draw a tangent at a point on the wave front then a line drawn perpendicular to the tangent at that point is called a ray the ray is the direction along which the energy of the wave travels christian huygens applied the same theory to the light and proposed that light travels in the form of waves a point source generates spherical waves in three dimensions similarly a line source like fluorescent tube and linear slits will generate wave fronts that are cylindrical in shape a plane wave front can be produced by any source located at far distances from the source best example is the plane waves which arrive from the sun at large distances a small portion of a spherical wave front appears to be a plane wave front now if we know the shape of a wave front at a time t is equal to 0 using huygens principle we can easily determine the shape and position of the wave front at a later time let us consider a point source s yes. the source s yes generates a spherical wave front ab traveling away from s yes. now according to huygens principle each point along the wave front ab is the source of new disturbance and spherical secondary waves originate from these points which spread out in the forward direction these secondary waves are called as wavelets if we assume that the medium is isotropic then the velocity of wavelets will be same in all directions the radius of secondary wavelets is given by r is equal to v into t now if we draw a tangent to all these waves we will get the position of the new wave front a dash b dash when time t is equal to 0 the radius of secondary wavelets will be equal to 0 it represents the initial position of the wave when time t is equal to tau the radius of the secondary wavelets will be equal to v into tau and this will be the new position of the wave in the similar manner we can determine the shape of the wave front 
of a plane wave going through a medium in forward direction. Unfortunately, there is one problem with this theory. Since the secondary wavelets are spherical, it will not only generate forward wave front, it will also generate backward wave front. But in practice, we do not find any back wave. To correct this problem, Huygens suggested that amplitude of secondary wavelets is maximum in the forward direction and zero in the backward direction. Later, Voigt and Kirchhoff mathematically proved that the amplitude of wavelets in any direction making an angle theta with the normal to the wavelet is proportional to 1 by 2 into 1 plus cos theta. Since theta for a back wave is 180 degree, the factor 1 by 2 into 1 plus cos theta will be equal to 0. That is why there is no back wave formed. Huygens principle is also useful in explaining the phenomenon such as reflection and refraction of light. We will study about this in the upcoming videos.